Hey everybody! We have what I'm going to call a long-awaited video on the Wise Smart Plug. I pre-ordered these. They're not uh, released to the public yet. But I figured we'd do a video and see how these compare to the rest of the uh, smart sockets that are out there. Um, these use the Wise app. They do not use Smart Life like most of them. I did set one of them up. This one I did set up just to see if it worked, and it did. The setup's pretty straightforward. You use the Wise app, and you connect to these in AP mode, and then it's set up in the app, and that's it. They're uh, pretty standard looking. Put that one out of the way. Just uh, they're a single. Uh, single socket size, so you can put two of these in a duplex outlet, which is nice. Uh, I also got, oh, I didn't show you. Let's see, we have the instructions, and I don't have the sticker in here, but I have a sticker that came with it, which is kind of neat. But here's the quick start guide. And the uh, diagnostic lights make me think that it is ESP based. Because it has kind of the same, um, you know, the same flashing light diagnostic stuff. Solid blue, slow flash, fast flash for pairing mode. I might even try pairing this to Smart Life at some point, depending on what I find inside. But here they tell you download the app, plug in the outlet, and then, you know, just kind of follow the instructions. It was pretty straightforward to set up. It, uh... Uh, I was a little surprised that you had to use AP mode. You have to, on your phone, look for the uh, wireless network that it's on. You know, it's its own wireless. It's called like Wise Plug something. You connect to that and then the app does the rest and loads in your uh, home Wi-Fi setting. So anyway, enough babbling about that. Let's grab a screwdriver and I'll zoom in and see if I can get this split open because that looks glued. We have some specs on the back. 15 amp max, that's interesting. Most of the outlets, uh, outlet modules that I have are rated to 10 amps, uh, 8 amps really. We'll see if that's real 15 amps or if that's, you know, not quite. Maybe there's a 15 amp relay in there. That would be cool. And the oh so useful Intertech rating. It would be nice if these were uh, UL, but that probably costs a lot of money. Alright, so... Okay. So that's what I thought. So they're just sliding it in and I'm guessing glue. And see if this side will pop up. There we go. So it might be glued and not thermally welded. Let's see if I can get the uh, this front side to pop up. Yeah, there we go. I can just go along this ridge. There we are. Now it's popped loose. So let's see. How do we want to unveil it? Should we go this way? And we'll just lift this up and off. Ready? One, two, three. Ta-da! Alright, so we have a golden relay. We have We have, I have bad eyes. All right, see if we can get that to focus. Probably not. But that's an ESP8266. So this, if it is not a Smart Life compatible as it sits, it could surely be flashed to be Smart Life compatible. It even has the uh, the points marked on the back that you would need to 
connect together to put it into a programming mode. And I hear my cat running around with a box. Let's go over it. You have some information here, 2019, 07, 29. So this was uh, born July 29th of this year, so this is pretty fresh. And the construction is pretty standard. The majority of the smart sockets out there seem to be built like this. I will zoom in more. You can really see what's going on. So power comes in right there. Now one, I don't know if you can see in between, but right here, that comes here and that bends and then goes up. And it goes in right there. There it says L for line. So that's where the power comes in. After that power comes in, I am guessing, uh, with some education behind it, that that splits off one pin, one leg goes to this one side of the relay and the other side goes to this fuse right here I'm pretty sure this fuse is what is is it fuse on the neutral? the fuse might be on the neutral that'd be a little unusual to me I would really expect to see the fuse on the uh, line I will check, but usually there's two fuses. Usually there's a fuse for the low voltage supply, which is over here. There's the uh, rectifier that's changing the wall current to DC. Uh, there's an inductor here. Underneath this inductor you can see U1. It's going to be a switching supply chip. Yeah. After the power comes out of this inductor, it's going to be about 5 volts. And that 5 volts is used to trigger the relay and to feed this regulator, which drops it down to 3.3 for driving the microcontroller radio. And of course, we have the button for turning it on, for uh, you know, manually turning it on, for setting it up. And that button's also going to go back to this board. So this board is waiting for a command from the button and ready to send a command to the relay as well as controlling the LED and then of course all of the uh, the Wi-Fi stuff and I can see there's the transistor and blocking diode for the relay so I was thinking about trying to take this apart uh, the ground just goes straight through there's no screws it looks like it's just a solder blob here on the neutral and then that line solder blob in the board should pop up so I'm gonna try that let me see I'm gonna get let's try this for holding it Okay, so let's see if we can get the line desoldered. Then I'll use the circlip pliers here to spread. There we are. It's going to come apart now. Let's get on this.
Okay. Almost. What do we have left here? A little bit on the uh, line side, but we'll go underneath. There we are. It's actually a lot easier than I expected. There's the module. And there's underneath. That's pretty good. Good separation. They even cut notches. Let's see how the uh, fuse works. So again, line comes in here. Then it does go to one side of the relay. And there's the output of the relay, but there's no fuse between these. That's a little, mm, my opinion. They do have a fuse on the neutral side. That's what that is. And that's a little weird. I wouldn't expect a fuse there. And... Let's see, then it goes over here. That's a class Y capacity. Yep, yep. Okay, so power comes over here, goes along there, it jumps through the board, and then goes to one side of that bridge. And the output of that bridge is going through a capacitor, so that's a capacitive drop power supply into here. That's a... No, maybe not. Maybe not a capacitor. It's a 0.1 microfarad at... 275 okay that's just going across that's just going across that's just for filtering so that's just getting a this is just getting the straight up 120 going into it so it's about 150 coming out so yeah 200 volt capacitors so but I would still expect a fuse the other modules have they have two fuses. There's a fuse to protect the microcontroller circuit and then a fuse for the line output. The uh, GoSund I looked at a few weeks ago had the two fuses. In fact, most of them have two fuses, so that's a little mm, surprising. Granted, they do have a fuse on the neutral side, so it's better than nothing. But I wonder why they didn't just, you know, put a fuse right you know right here even put that fuse here just could have been done I don't know I mean it's not like it's a fire hazard but still I would have put that fuse over here because now the only thing really if the uh, relay welds itself somehow if you put too high a load on this and the relay welds itself it's just gonna go until the contacts burn up or one of the traces go bad so you know just my opinion. I would probably want a fuse there. You know, two fuses. One for the low voltage supply and one that protects the uh, load going onto the relay. So now if we look at the relay, let's see what the specs are on the relay. 10 amp at 250 AC and then 50 amp at 125. That's pretty good. So this would probably run, this would probably run 12 amps pretty happily um, and I'm sure with um, you know not a real heavy or maybe if it tops out at 15 amps it would be fine if something that maybe ramps up to 15 amps it would probably be totally fine so that's kind of nice I like seeing the larger relay because uh, you got to figure most outlets that this is going to go into are 15 amp outlets so why not be able to switch the whole outlet load so there you go that's the uh, the wise smart socket. I'm um, going to clean this up just a little bit, open those holes up, and then we're going to put it back together. Put the board back in. I got the holes all cleaned up. Should just push. Ow, that's hot. Big surprise. The thing I soldered is hot. So I can push that down. Pin's hot too. All right, so they're good. So I'm going to get the neutral first, and then 
we'll do the line and then we'll shove it back together. Alright, I like that. And now we'll get the line. And that's soldered back together. Now if we look at the inside see the plastic it's well made nice molding the uh, it's got a good light pipe and interestingly like the go sun there's this weird goo down in there see that that must be cement yeah it's sticky like that stuff too that must be cement they use in here it's the only thing that makes any sense to me Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I'm going with. So, pop this out of my little holder. And let's put this back together. Flip that around. Put it that way. And then we can just give it a little push. And it pops right back in. It'll still pull out again, so I may uh, may add some glue, but this particular one I'm going to plug in and test first. I had issues with my bulbs, where three of the four bulbs would turn on randomly, even after multiple firmware updates. So, I kind of gave up on them, and that's fine. I'm going to have another video on my replacement for that. But these seem a little more... Um, robust. I'll say they use the straight up ESP8266 instead of the ESP WRUMO2 that the other ones did. So I have a feeling the hardware is a little more reliable. But we'll find out. I'm going to hook this up and see what happens and if I do end up having issues with it I'll do a follow-up video but um, otherwise I'm just going to use them. So if you wanted to pick up some wise plugs for yourself um, when I put up this video, they're not out for public yet, but they'll be out pretty soon, another week or two. So if you have any questions, comments, or whatever, stick them in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.